All right, everyone, this is Ross, and we're going to do a live stream today. We're going to talk all about how I choose the varieties of figs that I choose and why I choose them, how I come to that conclusion. At the end of this video, we're going to do a nice little Q&A for those of you guys who are here, want to join in on the live stream, you can. I think a big part of the reason why I'm doing this tonight, and I didn't give anybody a heads up, sorry for that, guys. But um, the reason I didn't do that is because, you know what? Yeah, there we go. I just turned on the chat. But um, the whole reason I didn't do that is because I forgot about Fruit Talk tonight. For totally forgot to release the episode of Fruit Talk tonight. So I think tomorrow we'll probably do that tomorrow morning and release the episode of Fruit Talk. And then that way um, we have uh, continuing the trend of just constant videos I think I'm over 250 videos now in a row or something. I, I'm losing track, guys. Hey, man, how's it going? How are the videos coming, by the way? But anyway, guys, let's get into this little video here. Um, all right, so how do I choose the varieties that I choose? Well, I think through experience I've learned that there's a certain style of fig that I really like. And I don't know if I become biased towards that style of fig or, um, you know, I really like smaller figs. Does that, isn't that weird though? Most, most of you guys probably like larger figs, right? Everyone wants a larger fruit. But for me in my climate, a large fig with the amount of humidity that we have, is just not a good idea. So, I always look for smaller figs and one of the smaller figs that I look for and I really like because it's so reliable, it's early, it's hardy, um, it's also very rain resistant, it doesn't split, it doesn't get affected by insects nearly as much, it's called Celeste. And Celeste is a really great fig. Um, here is one called Blue Celeste. And Blue Celeste, I really am a big fan of, or becoming a big fan of. I've got to try this fig. It's definitely an improvement of Celeste, and they're certainly different. So when people mention, you know, what your standard Celeste looks like, you could actually have Blue Celeste, right? It's possible. This fig actually is all over the United States. It's very common. Uh, it was definitely brought in from Europe, as all figs were or maybe from the, the Middle East, right? We don't know the exact origin of all these figs. It could also be a nice little adaptation of Celeste itself that has adapted to a certain climate over time and in fact turned itself into its own variety. We don't know. But here's a nice little improvement on Celeste called Blue Celeste that I'm really a big fan of. It's well described in Condit's monograph. You can see it has the Celeste style leaves here and the Celeste style look, right? It's got the slender look, a longer stem, a void in the center. You know, it's not the ideal fig in terms of size, maybe not even a flavor, but this is the kind of fig that is the most appealing to me. And I don't, again, I don't know if I'm biased towards these smaller slender looking figs or what, but these are the kind of figs that seem to do well in my climate. Let me show you guys more example. Yeah, thank you for your consistency. Yeah, I'm 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 really excited to be consistent. To be honest with you, uh, you know, it, it's a really good thing to do in anyone's life is to be consistent at one thing, no matter what it is. It just makes being consistent at other things easier. But anyway, let me show you guys another example. This is called Violette of Marseille, and Violette of Marseille is not one that I have I have yet, but. This fig is actually very similar to Black Celeste. And again, being consistent with that slender look, right? That longer neck, smaller fig. It's got a dark red interior. It's got the similar Celeste style leaves. Again, very, very similar to Celeste. In fact, Thierry on his website describes this fig to be some kind of adaptation of Violette de Bordeaux, at least that's what these people here believe to be the reason of how this fig was created that violette de bordeaux has been multiplied over the years for a very long time and 
basically it has slowly adapted and formed all these different figs. One is Ron de Bordeaux. We know everybody loves Ron de Bordeaux. Another small fig, Black Fig of Landis. This is another one that Thierry has in France, but if you ask me, it looks very similar to Hardy Chicago. Another fig that everybody in my area loves. Um, and then, of course, this is Violet of Marseille, which I think is spot on Black Celeste. My friend Brian and I probably, we both agree that this is very similar. And if I zoom in, look, look how beautiful this fig is. Just phenomenal. It's got a taste incredible. So this is another one that I'm really in love with, and it's all about the style. I don't know why this, why is that, right? But these are the kinds of things I'm looking for, and, and when I say how I choose a certain variety is like all about, because let's say, right, let's do a little experiment here, right? We'll, we'll do a little experiment. We'll go to Thierry's website, Figues de Monde, right and we'll just we'll look at a variety I've never heard of this one's called Anglinat and here's Anglinat and this is a fig I've never never seen before right and now I can already tell that I don't want this fig <laughs> and here's why if I zoom in a little bit I don't have to even hear what he has to say right if I zoom in a little bit you can see that the fig is splitting here it's splitting here. It looks like it's also having some rain damage, right? Even has some cracking down the side. That's not very good. The point is it doesn't really look like a fig that would do well here. And I don't think the size really matters all that much. But as I've said in the beginning of this video, for those of you guys who are just joining me, the larger figs, for whatever reason, tend to split more and don't handle that rain nearly as much as the smaller ones. I think the skin also has a lot to do with it. The interior has a lot to do with it. And you know what? I'm telling you guys how I'm choosing a variety, but it doesn't mean that you need to choose the, these varieties the same way that I am. I'm only recommending that you guys look for something local, right? Find something that lots of people in your area are enjoying and that's the kind of fig that you should look for and, and I think there's going to be a common theme no matter where you live I think in California right in a, a warm dry climate it's actually too warm it's too sunny that heat is too strong and uh, if you don't have a fig that isn't gonna ferment or spoil in that heat you know if you or if you do have one you're gonna have a problem right so you want to try to find a fig that is performing well in that heat. Whereas me, I'm looking for a fig that has thinner skin, right? That thicker skin is going to help you guys in California give you the ability to ripen the fig in bla blazing heat without having a problem with the fig spoiling. Whereas me, I'd rather not have a thicker skin. I'd rather have a thinner skin and have that rain just drip right off of it, right? And I don't really know exactly why a thinner skin fig performs better here versus in California. I don't exactly know the reason. I just know that, oh, maybe, you know, there's some truth to this, right? That a lot of people in different parts of the country are having more success with certain varieties and the, the skin, the thickness of the skin has a lot to do with it. You know, and also the, the thinner skin usually means that it's going to be more palatable. Um, to most people anyway. I'd, I'd rather not have a thicker skin. That's why a lot of people peel their figs is because the, the skin's too thick. Um, you know, and for me, a thinner skin is almost non-existent to the point where it's like, where is even the skin to peel? There is no skin to peel. Um, and it just creates a really nice mouthfeel, right? Food is all about texture and flavor. So you can't have good flavor without a, without a good texture. It's true, genetics and local genetics are key to cultivation. Very true. So another fig, and here's why I'm, what I'm getting to is that I'm gonna give you guys more examples of figs that I like and figs that I'm looking for and why I'm looking for them. Here's one right here, Pastelliere. 
I think this is probably one of the best figs in my climate, except for the fact that it tends to split, right? But if you live in a climate with a pretty dry season earlier in the season, then you're okay. Because this fig is very early. It's one of the earliest figs of the season. It's also very hardy. It doesn't grow very much. Because it doesn't grow very much, the limbs have a chance to harden up before the cold and the frosts. Um, so, you know, this is one of them again, and it has a similar shape. It's not exactly like a Celeste, right? This one's more squatted. I mean, look at this, right? Look how beautiful that is. It's filled with honey in the inside, a dark red interior. It's got that purple staining on the outside here, a very thin skin. And it's small and it also performs pretty well in the rain other than the fig splitting so there's honey at the eye beautiful beautiful blue fig it's blue so is blue celeste by the way incredible another fig that i really like is smith and wouldn't you believe that smith has a similar shape to a Celeste? It's like a larger Celeste or a larger Pastelliere. Again, beautiful, beautiful fig. And incredible in flavor. Handles the rain perfectly. Not that hardy. It's probably not that hardy at all. Mid-season. Let's give you guys another example here. Here's another fig that I'm really going to uh, really enjoy in the seasons to come. It's called Campanieri. This one was found in France um, by Thierry and most of the figs that I'm looking for, I wanna mention, because you guys should be doing the same exact thing. So when I find a fig variety, I wanna know where it came from. And wherever that fig originated and was growing there for years, that's gonna tell me some good indicators of what is gonna do well in my climate. Now, believe it or not, France is really not all that different of a climate from mine. Well, it is different, but in terms of the, the growing season itself, they have a, a cooler growing season than where I live, at least parts of France. Um, they also have pretty good rain, right? They have lots of moisture. So because they have some warmth they have a longer season than myself but they they have that moisture in the air with cooler temperatures that's kind of really reminiscent of my climate so what i'm looking for in a fig is not just what it looks like and what people are saying about it but where did this fig originate and if a fig originates in france and it's been growing there for hundreds of years perhaps or even 50 years you bet that it's going to be somewhat adapted to that climate and over the years has withstood the test of time, right? Withstood um, really extreme cold. It turns out that not only is Campanieri extremely early, but it's one of the hardiest figs that Thierry has in his collection. Um, and it's withstood just tons and tons of cold. Look. This is a very similar shape to Pastilleri, believe it or not. A flatter fig, a smaller fig, the longer stem, thin skin, beautiful red interior with the with the honey in there. Um, unbelievable beautiful variety that handles the rain well. So again, this is like the kind of thing that I'm I'm interested in when it comes to figs. You guys not convinced yet? Let me give you guys more examples of some figs that do really well in my climate. Well, I guess he doesn't have a photo of Violette de Bordeaux, but if I go to my videos here and I put in Petit Albique, this is a very similar fig to Violette de Bordeaux. And Violette de Bordeaux is undoubtedly one of the best figs in my climate. Um, handles the rain perfectly. 
it has a small eye as you just saw right um, it's mid-season it's very productive it's also actually quite hardy a very old variety from the Bordeaux region of Spain and I mean it just makes sense right that I should be looking for figs that originated in France or in northern Italy or parts of uh, maybe Croatia um, really cold or cooler parts of the Mediterranean maybe even mountainous regions of Iraq or Iran you know things that are a similar climate to my own and it's a shame that there isn't really that big of there isn't really many figs that have originated in Japan or China because they probably have the closest climate to my own um, as we've done the Köppen climate classification system you look that up that is the what basically tells you what kind of climate you're in and because you're in that climate um, you should then look towards other climates to see what's similar to your own so I hope this uh, helped you guys out in some way for those of you guys who are interested in figs we're gonna do a little bit of a Q&A here any of you guys have any questions um, I want to do a quick Q&A tell you guys a little bit maybe what's going on in the yard right now uh, in this current time of the year what what I'm doing and what's important because I did want to make a couple announcements so um, we'll do that now while you guys think of some questions that you guys may have and want to ask me thank you everybody for joining me by the way um, Gardner Earth guy says hey I'm a fig nom 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 <laughs> Uh, on northwest uh, Florida coast using this winter season root cuttings of proven producers from client homes. Thanks for devoting a channel about figs. Well, you're doing it right. If you find anything interesting, let me know. Any of you guys. Uh, you know, I would love to see some of you guys, what you're growing and your climate, what fig varieties that you guys have. There's all kinds of crazy stuff out there that... I don't know about there's probably so many heirlooms out there that exist um, it's just really cool to be able to find a, a nice little heirloom Bella yeah you can ask me any questions you want that's kinda what the purpose of this uh, Q&A is let's make a couple announcements real quick though uh, we do have a new website I mentioned the website prior and other videos but the the website <laughs> that I was using on Weebly wasn't free they lied to me I'm very upset about it. I feel a bit, uh, I feel like I've been kind of tricked in a couple things lately. It's really been upsetting that, um, I mean, maybe not Weebly is intentionally doing this, but it certainly seemed like they were intentionally tricking me. But my website, I, I really wanted it to be free. Um, I wanted it to be a source for my blog. I didn't necessarily care about the domain name and if there's ads on the website. I just want it to be some kind of online presence that you guys could go to and, and look at the the blog here that we've listed we we talked about the uh, how I was on the radio recently for those of you guys who didn't know that it was really really cool uh, we also did a, a nice little write-up on fig synonyms and we have the one we talked about originally which was on growing figs in cold climates we're gonna do all kinds of things like this like we do on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter for those of you guys who follow me there please follow me there if you guys haven't already but we do all kinds of things like what we do on the blog but on the blog I'm making it more long form more in-depth information um, things to really help you guys out and you know what uh, the social media is more about quick you know in your face just short information Unfortunately, that's kind of what social media has become. Uh, when I first started on Facebook with you guys, everything was super long, um, and I'm glad to kind of have that back on the website. It's rossratty.wixsite.com slash blog. That's a mouthful, I know, but please bookmark this website, guys, and go down to the bottom here and sign up for the newsletter, and um, I think what this basically does is that you guys will get a notification when I make a new blog post 
Um, and I'm going to be doing announcements kind of through this as well, not just through social media. So if you guys want to get notified through this, be my guest. It's up to you. We also have a, a nice little consulting page that we've set up for those of you guys who want my help setting up an orchard of any kind, whether it's figs or not. Um, I actually have my first client, believe it or not. I am I am using OBS, by the way. But I did get my first climate, uh, client that we're going to see him, Adam, on the 24th, I believe. So that's awesome. I'm a consultant now, guys. <laughs> Um, so really cool that I'm able to do this and, and just really help people get out there and start their own orchard, not just through the, the YouTube channel and inspiring you guys, but actually go to their property and help them organize things and set things up and tell them what I recommend and whatnot. So it's really, really cool. I'm so excited for this. Some of you guys have been asking me about plants and I just want to get all these all these announcements out of the way I'm sorry guys I know a lot of you guys probably already know all this but the plants we are there's a link here as well as in the description of all the videos I do this is my seller page on Figbid a lot of you guys have been asking me to buy plants I don't have anything for sale just yet it's too cold things are still growing we will have plants for sale come spring summer and in the fall uh, because different things grow at different rates. I also want to make sure some of this has fruited for me before I sell it, um, etc., etc. So if you guys want to do that, you know that's where you find it. Um, is there another announcement that I want to make? Oh, I do want to mention to you guys what is going on in my current climate and what I'm doing right now um, indoors because we've got lots of cuttings rooting. You guys have probably seen that. We're also doing lots of seeds. And if you guys go to my channel here, there's a new playlist I'm creating. Um, it's called 250 Days of Gardening. I have 180 days of frost-free days, but I think I can push that to somewhere around 250 days, maybe even more, starting now. And here we have what is the beginning, I guess. We already have six videos in here of the beginning processes of my year, my season. And we're gonna document the entire gardening process from day one all the way to the end, probably till this time next year, just like we've done with the fig cuttings to let you guys know how all this is happening as it's happening. I think um, the fig cutting thing has been really, really cool and I know a lot of you guys have appreciated that. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the, the gardening and I think it's gonna keep me busy and I think it's also important for myself, not just for you guys. I think this is a nice learning process that's worth sharing, but also something that I can go back and see you know, what has been going on in previous years to then make things better in the future for my garden. Um, we're off to an incredible start, I have to say. Um, the lights in the closet makes the biggest difference, whether it's the fig cuttings or the seeds. It's night and day. Uh, just having the right lights really makes a big difference. And I didn't really spend all that much money on lighting. You can get a nice little four foot shop light fixture for $15. You get two bulbs in there, which are 4,100K. That, that number is really important, 4,100K. And uh, you get yourself some T8 bulbs and you're good to go. It's really, really simple. Um, so we've started now some seeds. We started, in this little series here, we talked about what I needed, uh, what has come up seven days later. We're also starting some seeds a little bit of a different way. We're doing them in trays. We're doing them uh, 128 cells per tray. They're one inch by one inch, two inches deep. And we're starting cool oven crops in those. And you can see the sunroom behind me here in the video. But in this video, um, or in the sunroom, I should say, we're gonna germinate the seeds in the closet next to me, the cool loving crops, bring them out into the sunroom and have them sit here along the uh, the bottom here, along this window, it's south facing, should get plenty of sun or a reasonable amount of sun. And that way the temperature is gonna fluctuate as well, right? But it's gonna stay mostly cool because cool loving crops like temperature somewhere between 50 and 70 right and they'll fluctuate between that 
really won't get too leggy, too big. We want to keep them smaller because when we transplant them out about a month from now, right? Today's the 13th of February, but on the 15th of March, I'm going to transplant out all my cool loving crops. Um, we're going to see what survives. Obviously, I don't know exactly the hardiness of all of these different vegetables, but most cool loving crops are quite hardy. Um, and then we're going to throw a row cover over those to keep them a bit warmer, um, a bit protected from the frost. It should go really well. I mean, this is the earliest that I can get things out, I think. Uh, previously, I put things out on April 1st, and those are the cool loving crops. A lot of people, I don't know what it is or why why people do this, but you don't, a lot of you guys don't start your season before your last frost. Your last frost is only when you can get out the warm stuff, right? Get out the tomatoes, the peppers, the eggplants. Go out and get yourself some cool loving crops and plant them early. You have a whole bunch of growing season there that you're not really making use of, which is why this is the 250 days of gardening, right? Not the 180 days of frost-free gardening, okay? Plus, the food that you can grow in that little window from like, even just from like, April to May, which then probably will be, you know, pretty much ready to go sometime in May, is like incredible, right? It's very, very good. Um, it's it's like the best time to eat food, I think, in my personal opinion, at least out of the garden, because it's you haven't had it in such a long time. Um, there's things like snap peas that you guys can grow, carrots, turnips, beets, all that stuff is really, really good. Um, especially the snap peas, right? You can just take that stuff right off the vine, take a carrot out of the ground and eat it. You don't have to prepare it. You're out there doing gardening work and you got something to eat. So I don't know, take advantage of it. The other things we did, just the last thing I wanna mention here before I answer your guys' questions. We started some seeds of the tomatoes, the eggplants and the onions. And those were done February 1st. And the reason we did them so early uh, in the case of the tomatoes, the peppers, and the eggplants, is that we want to get them as large as possible. I put them in large pots. I don't really care how leggy they get. I want them to be as strong as possible so that when we transplant them in the ground, I can actually transplant them sideways. I can dig a trench and put them on their side rather than having the tomato plant grow upwards. They'll grow roots along the, um, the stem there and I'll have really strong plants come spring really excited for that um, you know any little extra edge I think I can get on my season is always a benefit it's a little bit of a hassle to take care of young seedlings or seedlings that have overgrown their pot but I have so many cuttings in here it doesn't seem to matter so let's answer your guys uh, your guys's that's not a word but we're gonna answer your questions now okay all right Okay, so TJ says, sweet, another live show. What's up, everybody? What's up, TJ? By the way, hello, everyone. If I didn't say hello to you, I didn't say hello to pretty much everybody. So, hello. <laughs> um, all right, let's see. Sticks Fig Nerd says, I try to find figs from other countries that have similar climate to us down here in Texas. <clears throat> well done. I don't really know where that is, though. Unfortunately, because... Well, it depends on where you guys live in Texas, right? If you're on the east coast of Texas or the west coast of Texas, it's very different. But uh, if you're on the... Well, yeah, I, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't know what I'm saying. Anyway, let's see. Angeli says, I hope I'm pronouncing your, right, and, er, your name right, Angeli. I'm in a tropical country and we have six months of rainy season. What variety would you suggest that doesn't split and is rain resistant? But whatever, uh, love your vids, keep them coming, please. Thank you, Angeli. Um, well, you have six months of rainy season. I would find a way to grow them out of the rain. I know that's a bit tough for most people, but uh, if I lived in a tropical country and I was growing figs, there would be absolutely no way 
in my mind that I would grow figs without some kind of cover. Uh, whether or not you could set the cover up and then take it down and put it back up and take it down, you know, that is always a great option. I would also cover the pot itself. I would keep all water from getting in the pot and I would completely control the water that goes into the pot because your biggest defense against rain is actually less moisture in the soil. Um, I found, and I'm really going to test that this year, but I have found that the less water there is at the soil level, the better it is overall in terms of splitting. Um, in terms of varieties, I would recommend, I would say Violette de Bordeaux. It's probably a really good one. Improved Celeste, Hardy Chicago. Um, if you go here to my spreadsheet, uh, which is in the description guys of every video here. We're going down in, in the description here what I'm growing You can go to my spreadsheet it pops up It's taking a while because I'm streaming but uh, top performing figs The majority of these figs here are very rain resistant and Would be a worthwhile trial in your climate um, it's really important that I have rain resistant varieties. So I would go with uh, actually Col Noir is showing really good rain resistance from Thierry. Um, Blue or black Celeste. I mean, a lot of the Celeste styled figs are doing really well. They've always done really well. You know, Improved Celeste is another one. I would say Long, Long de Dute is probably another one that's good. LSU Champagne, LSU Holier, LSU Purple, maybe not LSU Tiger. That one seems to split a bit more. Um, which is funny because all the LSU figs, most of them have Celeste in their parentage. So find something like I've just mentioned in, the, in this whole entire video of how to select a variety. You're kind of looking for Celeste, really. Okay. Hope that helps, Angeli. Bella Blue says, thank you. I'm in Australia. So we are nearing the end of the summer. Fig harvest is done, but some of the older leaves are yellowing and dropping. There's also a whole lot of new growth. Is that usual? Yeah. Once the figs uh, are done, they tend to resume growth and try to put out more growth. Really not good, but it ends up happening pretty much every year. And if there's a way that I could stop that from happening, um, I think the best scenario would be to probably get them to fruit heavily and then as the tree starts ripening fruit it would probably grow some more and then try to get that fig to fruit again on that new growth. If it fruits on that new growth it'll stall up again and it won't put out new growth and that's probably the best way to do it. Um, but you don't really have, I don't think you need to worry too much about that in Australia. But for people like me in colder climates, I think that's going to be a good strategy that I'm going to use next year. We're we're nearing the end of summer. I'm not really sure what your question is. Okay, so there's also a lot of new growth. Is that, is that usual? Okay, so yeah, I pretty much answered your question, I guess. Um, what I would do is pick up a lot of those leaves, um, especially if it's quite rainy where you are. I'm not sure if it is. But... Um, Rust could be a big issue late in the season. Just make sure you get up all the leaves if you have rust. Uh, Dave says, are you using OBS? Yes. To actually to stream this. And it really does. It's a nice program for recording video. It's really, really good. Um, I've also set up these little widgets here that you guys can see with the chat. See where my mouse is. Also, my my uh, webcam shows up I've also edited the microphone and you can really adjust the quality of my microphone to make me sound more like a podcaster or a professional planetary awareness says when figs are dormant and you put them in the basement or the garage they need any light you don't need any light you just need um, water probably every two months maybe four ounces of water every two months I don't water mine at all because I mulch very heavily, um, but I do mul I do water the really small ones. 
because they can dry out pretty quickly. But uh, you want to keep the temperatures low. That's your only concern. Keep your temperatures between like really 20 degrees and, and 45, maybe 50. Um, if, you, if you're in like extended periods of 50 or more, uh, they're going to wake up and you're going to have a problem in your garage or your basement where all your trees are awake and you're not going to know what to do. You're going to ask me the question and I'm going to be like, ugh. But uh, hopefully that answers your question. TPC Delise says, uh, congrats, just checked in a few minutes ago, getting home. Good to hear. Good to hear you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Island Faller says, is the Ron de Bordeaux a good variety? They're grown well here in Vancouver Island. Yeah, it's extremely good. It's one of the earliest varieties that exists. It's also very early. It's one of the tastier varieties that I have um, in terms of the early figs. Even the mid-season figs, it's really hard to beat. Um, I have a friend, it's his, his favorite fig. And he lives in, um, I think, New Hampshire. Bella Blue said, second question, my fig cutting is coming along now. Thank you for your tips as we're finishing summer here. Should I hold off up potting until spring or encourage a bit more growth? Well, it depends on how... Yeah, I, I would certainly hold off because if you up pot your fig and you this it's not very strong, um, you know, it's not really well rooted. It has a weaker root system maybe. Uh, the soil is quite wet. Maybe it's not a well-draining soil. It's probably a bad idea. Um, if the soil is too wet and stays too wet throughout the dormancy process, uh, you could lose the tree, which is why I only recommend watering them at the bare minimum throughout dormancy. Every two months, four ounces of water. That's it. Um, you know, lots of people have killed their tree over the winter time because they either up potted it into a swamp, right? You up pot it and you put it in something that's holding so much water, the roots are going to rot and then the tree's going to die. So it's up to you. I can't really make the call for you. You have to know how strong your tree is and what your tree can handle and how, you know, what your soil is like. It's really important. Uh, okay. I can usually get some plants to live through the winter here. Okay. Gotcha. That's incredible. You can get in North Carolina, you can get kale, broccoli, Swiss chard, onions, and turnips to go through the, the winter. Um, you know what? I've actually gotten some Swiss chard through the winter until we just hit about seven degrees quite recently. And then we hit two degrees and that was done. But onions for sure. Um, I'll have to try turnips too. My carrots have been outside all year. I still have some of them in the ground that I need to eat. Raul says, uh, how about 6,500K? 6,500 is fine. You just want to supplement that with something on the lower side of the Kelvin scale because different color temperatures do different things. Um, just like the sun. The sun puts out a nice broad spectrum of color. These artificial lights only put out so much spectrum of color. Some of it's more beneficial for growing and some of it's more beneficial for fruiting or flowering. I believe 6500K is more beneficial for fruiting than it is for growing. So what people do is they combine the two. They put 6500K with 2700. And then you color you cover the entire spectrum. For me, it was just easier and more affordable to just get 4100K, which covers everything for the most part and encourages growth. Bella says, uh, thank you for your great videos. The information you share covers so much detail. It helped me successfully navigate through rookie errors without too much drama. Oh, awesome. Thank you, Bella. I'm glad to have helped. Um, I made so many mistakes early on that you really should though make mistakes to be honest with you i know i helped you guys hopefully helped all of you make you know not make mistakes but that's what makes us better in anything in life so maybe you should go out there maybe not make a mistake intentionally but try something new 
And in the process of trying something new, you will fail inevitably and uh, you'll become better for it. All right, did I miss something here? Okay, so Island Faller asked the same question twice. Gotcha. Okay, Wayne says, uh, I left the coal of them in the Bahamas. No fig trees anywhere in the ground here. Hmm. Well, the Bahamas is uh, tropical, isn't it? So I wouldn't expect them there, but a uh, few big fiddle leaf figs. Hmm. They're beautiful trees, man. I'm, uh, I'm, you're lucky you're in the Bahamas. I would like to go to the Bahamas one day. Ibrahim says, hello. What's up, man? Okay, so it's the opposite. 3,000 is for flowering and fruiting and uh, 6,000 is for leaves. Okay. What I will say about the, the color temperature of the sun is that the afternoon sun is better for flowering and fruiting, whereas the morning sun is better for growing. So uh, that's why it's really beneficial to have your cool oven crops that you don't want them to bolt. Expose them to only morning sun and they'll grow and grow and grow and they won't get hit by that afternoon sun which enc encourages them to flower and bolt. So pretty interesting how that works in nature. It's really cool. TJ says Swiss chard's a beast. It is a beast. I, I'm a uh, Someone recommended, I can't remember who it was, but someone recommended Perpetual Spinach, and that's one that I'm going to try, I think, this year. There's also the Verde di Taglio variety from uh, Baker Creek, which I think is really, really incredible. I got one that's uh, the Neon Lights variety that has the, the colored stems, but I don't even think I'm going to grow it. It's like, yeah, it's cool that it's got colored stems, but... This Verde de Taglio variety lasted me all the way into uh, like late January this year, which is unreal. And I didn't protect it at all. Um, all right, well, seems like that is the only questions that are left, guys. I appreciate everyone for joining me on this one. Keeping up with that consistency, right? I think since May, we've been putting out a video every day. Careless Whisper says, hi, I reached out earlier. Yeah, I think I saw your um, comment on YouTube. The website here is new, and that's really been the struggle here. RossRaddy.Wixsite.com slash blog. We had, to, we had to change this, unfortunately, because Weebly is no longer free. So we switched to a free service, which is Wix. So... We need to buy figs urgently. Well, I don't have anything for sale right now. Like I said, along this video in the announcement section, um, we just don't have any trees for sale right now. It's too cold, plus some of the trees are just too small. Um, I don't really have any cuttings either, but uh, I may have some cuttings actually available. We're gonna see because um, it seems like there was a trade that I was uh, I had with a friend, and he's nowhere to be found. So, why hold on to these cuttings when someone else could use them? Oh, we may actually do a giveaway with those cuttings. So, stay tuned for that on social media or on the website here. We are going to do a giveaway. We will do a giveaway for some cuttings. So, for those of you guys who are interested in that, um, we're going to do the giveaway on our figs if you follow me or f or on that web website at all, not if you follow me. Gotcha. Well, you know, there's still people on Figbit here that are selling cuttings if you're interested. Figbit.com. There's 152 listings here for people that are interested in cuttings at this point in the season. But I don't have any cuttings, to be honest with you. Well, yeah, Ibrahim, that's what cuttings are, fig tree branches. Lucrative asked me, do I know anything about Carol Hedo Preto? I don't. Um, I think 
Doesn't Harvey sell that one? Uh, I know it's a Portuguese fig. And, you know, if you guys are interested in cuttings this late in the season, you're, you're kind of late to the party, you know? We sold all the cuttings basically in November and in December, and that was it. And most people did the same thing. Uh, Harvey just had his sale that we did videos on and talked about. This is already done, you know, and that happened in uh, January. So you're really getting late here with this. So some guy on, oh, um, yeah, I think that's Mike that sells that fig. Yeah, Carolhedo Preto. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know much about it, but I doubt it's very good for my climate. Could be wrong. We'll see. Um, it's certainly not one that I have or one that I'm trying to get. And we talked about the figs that I'm interested in and the figs that I, the reasons why I'm trying to get them in this video. So, for those of you guys who haven't seen that part of the video, please go back and watch it. This one's going to be published um, on the channel very shortly. So, anyway, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Um, take care, guys, and yeah. Be good out there, all right? See you guys for tomorrow's video. Take care.